Hey there, welcome back to AI Code King. Today, we'll be talking about COG VLM2. COG VLM2 is a vision language model trained for multimodal inputs based on the LAMA 38B model. It is a fully open source model that supports an 8K context limit, just like LAMA 3, and beats GPT-4 vision in multiple benchmarks. This model is a 19 billion parameter model. The parameter count in this model has increased due to the image training. It can support image resolutions of 1344 by 1344. It supports both English and Chinese languages as of now. The version before this model, COG VLM1, was based on LAMA2. So, it's great to see its new version based on LAMA3. It's available on Hugging Face, and it also has a live demo. It is not yet available on Olama, but I think it will be added soon. Anyway, it beats GPT-4 Vision and Gemini Pro in multiple benchmarks. It is also fully open source, and commercial use for it is allowed. Now, let's look at its benchmarks. In the text VQA benchmark, it scores 84.2, which beats GPT-4 Vision and Gemini 1.5 Pro. Then, in the Doc VQA benchmark, it again beats GPT-4 Vision and Gemini by scoring 92.3 in this benchmark. It also beats Claude 3 Opus in this benchmark as well. Next, in the Chart QA benchmark, it scores 81, beating GPT-4 Vision and Claude 3 Opus. But it lacks behind a little compared to Gemini, 1.5 Pro. Then, in the OCR benchmark, it blows everyone out of the water by scoring 756. GPT-4. Vision scores 656, and Claude 3 Opus scores 694. Then, in the MMMU benchmark, it lacks behind by scoring 44.3. GPT-4 V scores 56.8. Gemini 1.5 Pro scores 58.5, and Claude 3 Opus scores 59.4. Next, in the MMVET benchmark, it scores 60.4, while GPT 4V scores 67.7. Then, in the MM bench, it catches up again by scoring 80.5, while GPT 4V scores 75.0, and Claude 3 Opus scores 63.3. So overall, it's really great at benchmarks, beating GPT-4 Vision, Gemini, and Claude 3 in multiple benchmarks, which is pretty amazing to say the least. Now let's go ahead and give it a try. So, there are three ways that you can give it a try. The first way is the Hugging Face Spaces, where you can use it. Then, they have a site where you can test it, and then you host it locally and test it out. I'll be telling testing it out via the Hugging Face Spaces. I'll be testing it against GPT-4.0, which is now generally available. So, I'll be sending the same inputs to both GPT-4.0 and COG VLM2 to see which gives a better result. First, I'll be using one of my thumbnails to see if it can understand what the thumbnail is about. I'll be using my yesterday's video's thumbnail for this test. So, over here is the COG VLM demo space. I'll be attaching my thumbnail over here and asking, what is this thumbnail about? Now, let's see what answer it gives. Okay, so we have the response over here. As you can see, it tells you about the image pretty well. Although, it's a little verbose. It gives a point-by-point -point breakdown of the image, which is pretty cool. But it's not very confident in the text. This may be happening because Llama generally tries to give safe responses without jumping to a conclusion. So that's something I think may be off-putting for some people. Now let's send the same input to GPT-4.0 and let's see if it is good or not. Okay, so we have the response here. Just at a glance, it looks much better. The text it writes is confident. Plus, it can even understand the application name from the screenshot 
and remains confident about the application name. I have not written the application name in the text of the thumbnail. The name of the application is only visible in the screenshot. So, it even grasps the smallest details and brings it all together pretty well. So, in this test, I prefer GPT-40, although COG-VLM also comes very near. Now, in the text one, I'll be sending this image of two trees to both the LLMs, and I'll ask how many trees are there in this image, and we'll check if they give correct replies. So, over here, I send this image to COG-VLM, and as you can see, it gives the correct reply. Now, let's send the same thing to GPT-40. Okay, so this one also gives the correct reply. Pretty cool. So, this is a tie. Now, I'll send this flowchart image to it and see if it can generate correct code for it. This image was also shown in Grox Vision demos. So, I think it's a cool benchmark. Now, I have sent it over here. Let's see if it can generate the code. Okay, it generates it. But, it's a little unoptimized and a little wrong. For example, over here, it doesn't close the brackets, and we don't need else, if, and then else. It could just be done in one else statement. So, it's a little bad. But, it's still pretty usable. Now, let's send this to chat GPT and see if it can give the answer. So, this is the answer it produces. As you can see, it gives a more optimized answer by keeping a low number of lines. But, this one also has an issue. For example, the flowchart never said that the number guessing should be only between 1 and 2. So, it assumes something, which is a little bad. Anyway, it still is pretty cool. In this one, I'll give the upper hand to GPT-40. But, COG-VLM also came very near it. Now, let's send this product calorie composition to them. In this one, we'll be asking it how many calories are in five slices of this. The answer to this should be 100, as also shown in the Grox test. Anyway, let's first send it to COG-VLM. Okay, so here we have the response. It starts pretty thoughtfully, but at the end, it gives the wrong answer. So, it is not good at reasoning at all. Now, let's send the same thing to GPT-40. Okay, so over here, it is pretty accurate. It gives the correct answer, which is really cool. So, this one also goes to GPT-40. Now, let's send it this meme and check if it can explain this meme. As you can see, it explains it. Although, it tries to be more official in the approach, which is a little off-putting, considering we are asking for something that is funny. But overall, it explains the basic meaning of the meme. Now, let's send the same thing to GPT-40 and check if it can explain it or not. Now, as you can see, it explains it pretty well. Although, this also has the same issues as COG-VLM. So, this one goes to COG-VLM because of how similar they both are. Now, let's send this table screenshot and ask it to convert this to CSV. Okay, so over here, COG-VLM does it pretty well. It's pretty accurate as well. Now let's send the same thing to GPT-40 as well. As you can see, it also presents the same thing and works pretty well. So, this one also goes to COG-VLM just because it's on par with GPT-40. Now, we'll send it this image and ask which object is larger, the pizza cutter or the scissor. The answer should be that they are about the same size. I'll also be giving three options to them. Let's send it and see if it works well or not. Okay, so it says the pizza cutter is bigger, which is not the correct answer. Now let's send the same thing to GPT-40. So over here, it also gives the incorrect answer, which is that scissors are bigger. Okay, so in this, both are wrong. So, this will be a tie. Now, in the next one, we'll input this image 
which is a driving image, and the correct answer to this should be turn left. Now let's send it to COG VLM. Okay, so as you can see, it gives the correct answer, which is to turn left. Next, let's send this to GPT-40. Now, as you can see, it also gives the correct answer. So, overall, it's pretty good. I think this is pretty similar to GPT-40, and I think with some tweaking, you can make it pretty useful. I really like this one. It is very good at most of the stuff. You can use it all you want because it's open source as well. Go ahead and give it a try, and let me know your results in the comments. Also, if you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the Super Thanks option below this video. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.